Hello, everyone. Welcome back to this week's Algebraic Graph Theory Seminar. This week, we have Masa to tell us about the eigenvalues of perfect matching derangement graphs. Thank you, Tina. So uh, this project is actually an ongoing project, and it's a joint work with uh, Karen Moore. So we are working on the eigenvalues of the perfect matching derangement graph. Um, uh, so, uh, before starting, uh, I want to say that uh, this talk, I have two main parts. The first part, I, I uh, uh, have some background and overview uh, about the theorems and about the results we already know about the perfect matching derangement graphs. And then later, I'll give uh, some results that uh, we got so far with Karen. Uh, so let's start with the definition of perfect matching. So a perfect matching in the complete graph K to K is a set of edges by which every vertex is covered exactly once. So if you look at the complete graph K8 here, we will see that the edges in the um, orange, they form a perfect matching. Um, so every vertex, uh, they're covered exactly once. So this is a perfect match. Um, and we can easily calculate the number of perfect matching in the complete graph uh, of size 2K. And this is actually equal to 2K minus one double factorial. And this is like uh, 2K minus one times 2K minus three and so on. Um, so you uh, multiply every other number here. Uh, Okay, so if we overlap any two perfect matches, we will get even cycles. And um, if we consider all uh, even partitions or actually like um, even partitions with uh, different types of even cycles of 2K, then based on them, we can define a, a set of matrices, A lambdas. So suppose that here lambda is an even partition of 2K, then uh, the matrix A lambda is the matrix in which rows and columns are indexed by perfect matches. And the entry PQ corresponding to uh, perfect matching P and perfect matching Q, uh, they are gonna, uh, this entry is gonna be one if the union of these two perfect matches is exactly the shape of the, the, their union is exactly the even partition lambda. And it's gonna be zero otherwise. So A lambdas are zero one matrices. And if you put all them together in one set, they form a symmetric association scheme. And um, the good thing about this association scheme is that the uh, complex linear combination of these matrices in the association scheme, they form a Boltzmann-Mesner algebra, which has a good algebra, which is actually a good algebra and has good properties. Um, for example, like the one of the important uh, um, property is that they are symmetric. The matrices here are symmetric and they commute. So they are simultaneously diagonalizable. So if we um, have a matrix A, which is a linear combination of some matrices in A lambdas, the eigenvalues of the matrix A is gonna be the sum of the eigenvalues A lambda in this sum, in this summation. Okay. Uh, then we have uh, the concept of intersecting perfect matching. So a family of perfect matchings uh, of the same size, they are called to be intersecting if any two perfect matchings in this family, they have at least one edge in common. And here in this definition, um, if I want to def define T intersecting, then I say two uh, perfect matchings are uh, a family of uh, perfect matchings uh, are T intersecting. If any two perfect matchings in this family, they have at least um, T minus, uh, they have at least uh, T edges in common instead of one edges in common. But the focus of uh, this uh, talk is on intersecting perfect matchings. So I just, just ignore the definition of T intersecting. I just want to say we can generalize this definition and we have some good results on the T intersecting perfect matchings and the um, analogs of the EKR theorem on the T intersecting perfect matchings. OK, 
Okay. Uh, Okay. Uh, a family of perfect matchings of the same size um, we said is C intersecting, and here is an example. Um, consider uh, the blue edges here in the comp oops, the, com the blue edges in the complete graph K8. We see that there are, uh, of course, there are a perfect matching. They form a perfect matching. And the orange uh, edges also, they perform a perfect matching. And now, if we take their unions, and if we overlap them, we will see that they have at least one edge in common. If we check uh, the edge one, two, this is the, an edge in common. This is actually, the, the, this is a, an example of intersecting perfect matching, but this is actually two intersecting perfect matching as well, because we are sharing two edges in common, okay? Uh, but again, let's focus on intersecting. So this is an example of intersecting perfect matching. And uh, we see that when we overlap them, their union form two two cycles and a four cycle. And this is actually a partition, an even partition um, for it. So lambda is a partition of eight. Uh, okay. Uh, let's move on. Uh, okay. Now, if we consider the set of all perfect matchings in the complete graph K to uh, K to N of size uh, two N, uh, that they contain a fixed edge then they are called canonically intersecting or trivially intersecting. And the size of canonically uh, intersecting perfect matchings, we can calculate them easily. The size is 2K minus three double factorial. And um, it actually, these canonically intersecting perfect matchings are important. Why? Because they are the only largest intersecting family perfect match, uh, the intersecting uh, families of perfect matches. And this has been proved by Gatsil and Mar in 2017. Uh, okay. Uh, so as a quick uh, review what they did to prove uh, the previous statement, they actually defined a graph for which the size of the largest coclic is equivalent to finding the, so the, the size of the largest set of intersecting perfect matches. Um, so they turned the problem into finding the size of the largest coclic of a special graph. And they showed that the equality, the equality holds for the ratio bound for that special graph. So they could prove that uh, uh, the EKR theorem for, for intersecting perfect matches. Um, okay. Just um, quickly, I just want to say what is the ratio bound here. So the ratio bound is a bound is a tight up uh, is a bound on the size of the largest coclic. So if uh, I show alpha, I show the size of the largest coclic by alpha then this is bounded by uh, the size of uh, the number of vertices in the graph over one minus K over tau. So here, this theorem holds for um, the regular graph. So here K is the degree or the greatest uh, um, eigenvalue and tau is the least eigenvalue. So what they did, they, they uh, for, the, for that special graph, they found the largest and the least eigenvalue, and they showed that the ratio band holds with equality. And actually, the, the canonically intersecting uh, perfect matchings were a co click for that graph. So they showed that this is the, the largest set of intersecting perfect matchings. Okay, um, let's move on here. So this is the graph they defined. So perfect matching derangement graph. Um, 
consider uh, the graph M to N to be the graph whose vertices are perfect matchings of the complete graph on two K on two N vertices. And in this graph, two vertices are adjacent if they are not intersected. So of course, any co-click in this graph must be intersecting. And so finding the largest co-click is equivalent to finding the largest set of intersecting perfect matches. Um, this graph uh, has brought uh, many attentions recently and people are working on this uh, graph um, on the um, eigenvalues of this graph. And um, here, we also focus on the eigen, our project is to uh, find um, the eigenvalues of this uh, derangement graph. Um, but before moving on, I want to mention that this graph is actually union of the graphs in the perfect matching association scheme I mentioned before, in which uh, the even partition lambda has no cycle of length two. So it means that it's, they're not intersecting, right? So I can write the adjacency matrix for this graph as sum of A lambdas here, uh, but for which uh, they don't have a, a cycle of length two in their partition. Uh, okay. So the eigen, we said that uh, this um, um, association scheme is um, uh, simultaneously diagonalizable. So of course the eigenvalues of uh, this graph is equal to the eigenvalues of the sum of, is equal to the sum of the eigenvalues of the matrices A lambda in this sum. Uh, okay, so if we have the eigenvalues of A lambdas, or in other words, if we have the character table of the perfect matching uh, association skill, then we are done. Then we can find the eigenvalues of the um, derangement graph. But the problem is, uh, is that we don't always have the um, perfect matching association scheme uh, for all values. So um, here, this is an example. So consider um, the M2, uh, sorry, here I meant, this is M8 uh, for this, uh, for this uh, table. So we are focusing on M8. So we are, here we don't we have the character table for the perfect matching association scheme on eight vertices. So these are the classes, and each in each column we have the eigenvalues corresponding to that matrix or to that class, and uh, the rows correspond to the modules or the eigenspaces here. Now we want to find the eigenvalues of M8. So we just need to add the eigenvalues of the, mat uh, of the matrices here that they don't have uh, um, a cycle of length two, which is A8 and A4 and four. So if we add the eigenvalues here and here, we will get the eigenvalues of the derangement graph here. Okay, uh, let me clear things here. So as I said, we don't always have the complete character table, and for the most recent, the most uh, recent result we have is uh, up to two k equal to forty for the complete character table. Okay, so we should try to find another ways, another techniques to find the eigenvalues of M eight. Uh, okay, so uh, we already know the degree and the least eigenvalue of the derangement graph. And this has been shown in uh, Karen and uh, Chris in their work in 2017. So the degree of uh, the degree is gonna be, this is gonna be the degree, which is, the de uh, which is equivalent to this summation. And the least eigenvalue is actually the degree over two and minus two with the negative sign. So using the least eigenvalue and the greatest eigenvalue, they could prove the ratio of equality. 
Okay, and then they conjecture in their work, they conjecture that the perfect matching derangement graph satisfies the alternating sign property. So they say that, um, so, so far we only have the greatest eigenvalue and the least eigenvalue, but they, they are saying that the sign of the eigenvalues are alternating and uh, this actually depends only on the size of the largest part here. So the sign of uh, any uh, eigenvalue here corresponding to partition lambda is negative one to the power n minus lambda one, the size of lambda one. So uh, if I go back here, uh, let me clear things here. Okay, here, let's check it on this table. So uh, this is, this only has one partition, right? This module only has one partition. Then this is the one with uh, the greatest part, the greatest, the greatest part of size six. And then the next two, they have the greatest part of size four. You will see in each class, like these classes, the signs are alternating. So positive, negative, positive, negative. So this was their conjecture. And actually in, uh, in a very new work, in a very recent work with uh, Ko, Ku, and Wang, they proved this uh, um, altern the alternating sign property. So what they did, they used some techniques um, and uh, results on symmetric functions and jet polynomials. And they got a formula for the eigenvalues based on a family of shifted symmetric functions. By shifted symmetric functions, I mean these Ki's here. Uh, but the problem is that finding these Ki's for any like arbitrary lambda is not easy. So this is a formula, this is a, like a, a formula for um, the eigenvalues of the derangement graph, but uh, it's not easy actually to calculate all this. Um, they just use this formula to prove the alternating sum property. So what they did, they proved that these Ki's, they are increasing and uh, by this fact, they could prove that the alternating sum. Uh, okay. Mm. Uh, but the, that the shift that symmetric functions Ki is here in this formula, they can be obtained by a combinatorial formula, um, which was uh, introduced by Alexander's, uh, Alexand Alexanderson and uh, Frey in 2017. So we have a combinatorial formula for Ki, but still it's not easy to uh, calculate. Uh, okay, so to get to that, I, uh, to that, to that uh, combinatorial formula, I need to explain uh, some concepts here first. Uh, the first concept, the, the concept I want to explain here is the permuted uh, tablet. So here, consider lambda to be a partition, an, uh, an integer partition of n, and k be a number less than or equal to n. Then a set of, uh, uh, as the set p, t, lambda, and k, uh, is a set of permuted tablets in a, a family of a tableau uh, of shape lambda. So in this, uh, I, will, I will explain an example, but in this um, tableau, uh, we, the shape is lambda and we have K marked boxes here, uh, which are um, actually labeled with positive integers with the following properties. The first thing we should uh, we should have is to is uh, is that no two marked boxes must be in the same column, and labels of each row actually they form a permutation of size j and j is considered in for example in in that row in the 
the row we are considering, uh, J boxes are marked. So um, these uh, mark these labels for this row, they uh, form a permutation. Uh, let's call it pi. And the weight of each row is alpha to the power J, which is the number of uh, marked boxes minus LR mean of pi. I will explain what is LR uh, mean of pi. And the weight of the whole table, the whole tableau, is going to be the product of uh, the weights of different rows in this tableau. Uh, and here I mentioned the uh, LR mean. So LR mean is actually, if you consider uh, a, like a, perm a permutation, let's say five, three, two, four, one. So this is a permutation of size five, and I want to find the, the left to right minimum for this, the number of left to right minimum of this permutation. So I start with the very left um, um, entry. So I count it as one. How? I want this entry to be less than any other entry that is to the left of this, uh, this entry. So the first one, of, of course, is uh, the smallest because there is nothing on the left side of it. Then we have three. Three is less than three and also is less than five, right? So I also consider three, I count it. So I count five, I count three. And then two is also less than three and less than five. So also I consider two. But four is not less than uh, other entries on the left side of four, right? Because two is less than four. So I don't consider four. Also one is always a less than any entry on the left side. So here the LR mean of this permutation is four. So for this example, this is equal to four. Now, the weight of each row we were talking about in the tableau is equal to alpha minus the number of label box minus uh, the left to right, the number of left to right uh, minimum here. Okay, uh, to make it more clear, let me give an example. Okay, so here I want lambda to be uh, like I have the lambda to be the partition eight six four and two and k is equal to eight so if i want to have a tableau in uh, p t lambda and eight um first i should i start to draw the tableau so the first row has eight cells the second row has six cells. Sorry for my poor drawing. And then four and then two. Okay. Now, so, so when K is eight, it means that in this whole tableau, I should mark eight, eight boxes. So I start, for example, I just put randomly like five here. I mark this. Uh, Cell. So if I mark this, I cannot have any other marked um, cells under five, right? And I do like I. This is an example of uh, what I want. So two, three. Oops, in the wrong place. So two, three, two, one. And uh, and uh, one here. So you'll see in each column, I only have I have at most one uh, cell that is marked, right? And if we look at each row, we will have 
permutation. So the permutation for the first row, let's call it pi one, it's gonna be five, two, three, four, one. For the second row, it's gonna be two, one, and then for the rest, there is nothing, right? So I just ignore it. Um, here I can write like pi four to be one. Okay, now, I need to figure out if I, I need to figure out what is alpha to the power J minus LR mean of pi one, right? So J here is the number, is the size of the permutation here, which is five. So this is equal to alpha to the power five minus LR mean of pi one, which we calculated on the previous slide, right? It, it was four. Uh, let me just make sure I. Oops, sorry. I think it's oh, my bad. This is three because here five, two, and one are the ones we consider. These are the ones that the, any other entry to their left side are uh, greater than that. So here, for the first row, I have the weight equal to alpha to the power two. For the second row, so if we calculate, LR mean is gonna be two. So alpha is the size of uh, uh, pi two, which is two, minus LR mean, which is two. So it's gonna be alpha to the power zero. And the same thing here. So alpha to the power zero equal to one. And the weight of the whole uh, table, W, is gonna be the product of the weight of each row. So it's gonna be alpha to the power two times alpha to the power zero times alpha to the power zero, or actually just alpha to the power two. Okay. So, it's okay, I'm gonna clear things and move on. Now let's go back to that uh, to the formula uh, for the uh, eigenvalues of the derangement graph here. So you see in this formula, KIs were uh, the shifted symmetric functions, and by this definition, these KIs are actually sum of uh, the weights of the tableaus, all possible tableaus in uh, PT. Uh, when uh, we uh, cells on the uh, on those tablets of shape lambda. Uh, okay, so now we have a comp combinatorial formula, but still, considering all possible cases, we still don't have a formula, right? Uh, okay, so. What we did actually, so from now on, these are our results. Um, uh, as I said, this is an ongoing project. And uh, here are the some of the results we so far got. So we first started to calculate the simple ones, the easy ones, right? So if we consider lambda to be all ones, so the form of the tableau is going to be just of this form, right? Just one row. Right, so it's easier to calculate Ki here, and actually we could calculate it. We consider all possible cases, and we got this formula. Then we next move to the case when we have like a two row. The first row has um, n minus two blocks, and the second row has two blocks, and. Um, also, we consider, we calculated, we consider different possible cases and we calculated the formula. And we kept going um, three, four, like all possible um, cases when we have two rows with different sizes of rows here. And we started to see a pattern for KIs. So let me. 
clear things here and move on. Uh, but to actually show the pattern, so this is the pattern I'm talking about here. So when we were calculating, we saw that the um, the coefficients for the terms in KIs, they are like of the form double factorial. So first we conjectured this uh, equality. And for this, we needed to show this lemma. So what this lemma says, this lemma says that the sum of um, alpha is minus uh, LR mean of pi for uh, all uh, partitions of size i is actually 2i minus 1 double factorial. Um, just um, I should mention that here alpha is still like for this lemma, we consider alpha to be 2 uh, because uh, for finding the eigenvalues of the perfect matching derangement graph uh, in, with the formula we had, uh, I showed before, it's, it, it's, uh, we can consider alpha to be 2. Uh, so we prove the lemma by induction on I, and then we could uh, prove that any um, sorry, I think I here if I go back, I made a mistake. Oops. Here. When I was explaining, this is of this form, like a four and bunch of one under. So these are hook uh, form uh, eigenvalues. Sorry, I just, I got confused. So um, this is actually the eigenvalues corresponding to hook. And um, if I move on, this is the general formula for all the eigenvalues with the shape of hooks. So if we consider lambda L to be the size of the first row and then bunch of ones under, like all for uh, the other rows, then uh, KIs are gonna be of this form. And for small values of L, we can easily uh, calculate and get the closed formula for, um, for the eigenvalues. Okay, so this was the first um, class of eigenvalues we found. Uh, then Karen actually um, had this idea of ordering uh, the eigenspaces here. So I explained this ordering on this example. This is actually uh, paper on my notebook. I just took a picture and put it here. So here, consider 2n to be uh, 8, 16. So here are how it works. The first um, icon space is uh, 16. Then when you want to move from 1, when you want to move uh, up, uh, each layer, you will see each layer, are based on the size of the first, um, um, the biggest part. So you see in this layer, the biggest parts are all 12, this one 10 and so on. And when I wanna move from 16 to 14, I split 16, I take one um, cell of 16 and split it and I get 14 and two. Then when I want to move from 14 and 2, what I can do, I can just split 14, like I can take out mm, like mm, a part of size 2 from 14, and then either I can put it uh, beside the part with 2, which gives me 4, or um, I can just put it aside. So I get 12, 2, and 2. And I keep moving like this, and this is uh, uh, the ordering we get. Um, so if we go back, um, 
inheritance. Okay, if I go back here, these ones, these ones are actually one of the branches here. So, um, So this is actually this branch, uh, this one. So we get the formula for this branch. Okay. So, so far we have this part. And then we said, what about focusing on these eigenvalues on this branch? And also the eigenvalues on the top layer here. Uh, okay, so we also like with similar uh, approach, we could find the eigenvalues for which they, we have uh, um, cells of size, uh, rows of some, some rows of size two and then some rows of size one. And this is the eigenvalue. Oops. So this is the closed formula we get for this eigenvalue. So this one is actually the top, if I go back, is the top row. Here, just I should mention that I showed the um, partitions, um, um, the even partitions here, like with four, 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 and four and a bunch of twos. But uh, in the formula I was showing, I should, yeah, this is, I show it like this, like in the format, the, I just divided by two, which was easier. So it's gonna be like two, 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 and this is gonna be like two and bunch of ones. Okay. And the last result we have so far is when we have a, uh, a partition with uh, only two parts. Uh, okay, sorry, this must be. So here we have two parts, lambda one and lambda two, and the size of lambda two is L. So the eigenvalue here is gonna be of this form where Ki is the summation. Um, so, so one of our goal, if I go back again to this, uh, oops, no, go back. If I go back here, one of the goal here. Different, uh, um, different uh, um, the derangement graph for different sizes. And we saw that when we are moving up like here, then the absolute value of the eigenvalues in this branch are uh, decreasing. Um, one another important thing is that the, the greatest eigenvalue or the degree correspond to this module, to this eigenspace. And the least eigenvalue correspond to this module. Now, if we just, for now, ignore the alternating sign, like the, if we just ignore the sign, the absolute values are decreasing. So we are guessing that the eigenvalue corresponding to 12 and four are actually um, n minus two and two in, the, in our formula, this represents the second largest eigenvalue of the adjacency matrix for the derangement graph, or actually, I think we can say this is the uh, second smallest uh, eigenvalue of the Laplacian uh, of this graph. Um, still, I'm trying to figure out because I know that the least eigenvalue, the second uh, least eigen, the second smallest eigenvalue of uh, Laplacian correspond to algebraic connectivity, connectivity. Still, I don't know if it gives me anything or not, but um, I'm sure there are some um, beautiful patterns and uh, 
meaning in this uh, eigenvalues in the in the in this order. Um, what else I wanted to say? Okay. So yeah. So so far, as I said, I have this. We have this branch. We have this branch and the top one. Um, and. Uh, The next step we are considering to do in this project is to see if we can get a closed form uh, for um, the second, uh, not the second largest, the, the, the eigenvalue corresponding to uh, the uh, module n minus two and two, which we, are, we guess that this is the second largest eigenvalue. And also it's good to learn uh, because all these uh, patterns or all these um, combinatorial formulas, they are coming from uh, the use of uh, symmetric functions and Jack polynomials. So um, I don't have my uh, knowledge on symmetric functions and uh, Jack polynomials are not that much. So I'm trying to understand them better and see if I can use it and uh, maybe show some similar uh, results uh, on the um, derangement graph for like, for example, for T intersecting surface matches. So uh, another thing is that um, if we can use this uh, symmetric functions and Jack polynomials to work on the character table of the perfect matches. So um, this is another thing. And there are many beautiful patterns in this character table. In our previous project with uh, Karen and uh, Sean Fallett, we, find, we found many beautiful patterns. Still, um, we, I think there is a lot going on we don't know. So maybe still we can go back and uh, using the symmetric functions, we can find more in, uh, information about them. And also the, the last one that I'm curious about is the decreasing pattern I explained on the, about the absolute values of the eigenvalues uh, in the order that I explained. And uh, yeah, that's all I wanted to say. Um, um, as I said, this is an ongoing project. So if you have any idea, um, you're more than welcome to share it with us. Thank you. <laughs>